Hey guys, I'm Tim with Bleep and Jeep. In today's video, I'm going to be installing this awesome set of new cables and battery terminals from JeepCables.com. This is really the perfect time to upgrade the terminals on my battery. My positive terminal, as you can see right here, is starting to fail. It's actually cracking uh, right here. And I have some weird arcing problem going on where it's arcing off the battery post to the terminal and causing some really deep pitting. I'm not sure why it's doing that. Uh, I guess due to a bad connection somehow for some reason. Uh, anyway, this will be a perfect time to upgrade this before that fails and leaves me stranded somewhere. The first thing I need to do here is make some room uh, in this battery region to work. So uh, this is part of the, the uh, vacuum control for the, the heater and all that kind of stuff. This used to be in the front bumper. Now I just have it loose in here. I'm going to cut this vacuum line back, mount that to the firewall over there, get the battery out of the way, and then we'll have a clean workspace to put all the new wires in. Now that the battery's pulled out, everything's disconnected, and I remounted this little vacuum ball uh, to the firewall. It's nice and secure over there. Uh, now that all that's out of the way, we're actually ready to do something here. There aren't any instructions that come with the kit, which is fine because it doesn't need any. Every, every cable here is labeled uh, with, the, with exactly where it goes, and as long as you read what it says on both ends of the cable, you just you can't go wrong. So this side goes to our power distribution center. This side goes to the fuse. It, it's little details like that that just really help simplify uh, kits like this. And it's, it's one of those fine details that not a lot of companies do. Anyway, it, they're all labeled like that. And it's just, it's a really nice touch. So the first cable that I'll be replacing is the one from the cylinder head to the firewall. Yeah, the nut over that stud needs to be pulled off. It's hard to access from the top. Uh, you need a wobble head to get to it. Uh, you can also use a just an open end box wrench here and snake it back in there. I finally got the nut off that stud and then I dropped it. Uh, you can kind of see it. It's sitting on top of my bell housing against the firewall down there. I can't find my magnet stick. But anyway, I'll get that out of there somehow eventually. So with this thing, off there we can pull that right off fish that out and then we unbolt it here I would recommend starting with this cable just because it's kind of a kind of a hassle to get in there and get it out that's really stuck we're gonna need the bigger impact all right a little of this let that sit there for a minute now a little of this hopefully this one does it Oh yeah, new cable in place. All right, getting that nut back on there. It is a tight fit. I got it threaded on by hand a little bit, but I think with this wobble head, I'm gonna be able to make something happen here. Go real slow so I don't screw anything up. Hmm. Hmm. Nope. I don't think that's working. Yeah, that didn't work. Ended up just smashing that lip on my my uh, firewall there. And then I went to feel it and sliced my finger open, of course. So I'm not going to bother showing you guys. It's just going to be a, a long, slow, turn-by-turn -turn process getting that on with a, a box wrench. All right, that cable's on there good and tight. So the next cable that I'm going to replace is the battery negative to engine block. You can see it goes right down there half inch for that nut negative cable engine block to battery installed and then the last ground cable is uh, fender to battery. Battery's not in obviously. I was able to bolt it uh, right to there. I think it's going to be plenty long enough to reach the battery. And then uh, this used to ground. That's from my, my Rough Country light control box that I don't have anything hooked up to yet. But I had that grounding just to the, the fender by itself, which is definitely adequate as long as we have 
a good ground cable going to the fender but now it's actually going to basically connect it's, it'll essentially be the same as connecting from the battery uh, to the box itself because I have these overlapped and sharing the same bolt the next one that I'll be replacing is the uh, red battery positive to PDC power distribution center which is this and that is going to be uh, this guy right here so you can see it's not very long that'll be battery positive to PDC get that one pulled off and replaced we'll be replacing this cable too um, but for now I'm just going to pull that off and then end up putting this guy on first uh, that way we can just leave it in place so that's going to go from there to battery positive and uh, these cables are longer than the stock ones so you, you might have to do a little bit of messing around with them to wrap them down there or twist them up or something to shorten them um, but it's nice to have that extra length you have a lot of flexibility with them and you're not cramped all these will have to be tightened up obviously uh, the next one we'll be replacing is this guy which is labeled PDC power distribution center to fuse and the fuse is this guy right over here this is the the ANL fuse that this kit comes with and if you have a high output alternator or you plan on using a high output alternator in the future here's a 200 amp fuse if you have the stock alternator in your Jeep like I do it also comes with a 150 amp fuse leave that loose for now. The next thing is going to be to figure out where to mount this ANL fuse. It doesn't, I mean it really doesn't have to be mounted um, but it probably should be just to keep it a little bit safer. It does look like there's room if you mount it on top of the PDC cover here that the, the hood will still close. Um, you could do that. I don't know if I want positive cables coming out of the back of this thing. Uh, so I'm probably going to mount it over here. Well, let's see if I can get it in here one-handed. Move all this. So I'm probably going to end up mounting it over here, something like that. And if you look down at the battery tray, there's just barely enough room. I think the battery might clear, and that's probably where it's going to go. Just unfortunately, that's open to the tire, so it might get a lot of moisture coming in, uh, which should be fine, really. I just prefer not to have electrical stuff getting wet whenever possible. I guess I should put my inner fenders back in. All right, let's mount this thing up. All right, now this guy did not come with any kind of uh, mounting screws, um, but I just dug around through my Jeep stuff and found some of these, these sheet metal screws are probably factory Jeep screws. It looks like they're gonna fit and work uh, just fine. So I decided to mount this thing at an at a angle pitch down because it's open on both ends. And that way, if for any reason a lot of moisture does come in here, it'll just quickly drain out and uh, won't cause any issues. You could mount it flat and uh, you know maybe put a drain hole in it or something. Uh, realistically, it's probably not a problem at all. I just get a little, a little weird with stuff like that. I also don't like mounting things at an angle, so that's hard for me. Maybe a little bit of OCD. And mounted. With the ANL fuse mounted up, the next cable we'll be installing is the fuse to alternator. On the 97 to 01 Cherokees, this little section right here of this green wire, right in there, that is actually a, some sort of fuse that goes to the alternator. And the ANL fuse, this big old guy here, is what is replacing this little lightweight factory fuse. And this cable all the way down to the alternator is what this new large diameter cable will be replacing. 10 millimeter nut.
just got to fish this out from underneath the battery tray. Hopefully that'll fit. Yep, there it is. And that should just come right out of there. Just going to fish the new cable in a similar direction here. Nice direct line right to the alternator. And looks like looks like it's not going to fit on that plastic piece on the back of the alternator, so I'll probably have to remove that. There is another 10 millimeter nut beneath the 10 millimeter nut that held the positive cable on. Okay. Yep. There we go. Let's take a look at this plastic. Okay. So yeah, it's just a shroud that drops in there. Out here on the bench, you guys can see what's going on a lot better. So this is the plastic shroud on the back of the positive stud on the alternator. Here's the cable. As you can see, it just doesn't quite fit. So we can either auger out the plastic or we can notch the cable and it'll drop right in there. That did sort of work. It, it definitely stretched it open a little bit. I also ended up cracking it. Um, it opened it up enough though that I could reasonably sand the, the lug here on the end of the cable, which I did, and now it, it fits in uh, real nice all the way down. Uh, so I'm ready to put that back in the alternator and then hook up the cable. With that bolted up, I routed that cable underneath the tray where the old one was. It's going to loop around right here and then connect to our fuse. Uh, what the heck? We have these things labeled backwards. It says fuse on this side, but it doesn't fit. This one says fuse and it has a larger hole on the lug. Uh, no biggie, just got to pull it off again and sand the fuse and so it fits in the alternator and swap the alternator in to the fuse. Sweet! I just flip that cable around, coming off the alternator, runs under the battery tray, and then I just put a little loop in it where it runs into our ANL fuse. I have that all bolted up. Now this cover should just snap into place like so. Just one wire left. The last cable to replace will be the main power cable that goes to the terminal and the battery and runs down to the starter. Mine is kind of tied up here in the wiring harness in the loom and goes all the way back down there. So I'm going to get this thing cut apart and pulled out and we'll go to the starter and see what that connection looks like. I now have all that wire loom disassembled and pulled out of there. You can follow that red wire all the way back down to the starter. 13 millimeter. Slip the new wire back down there. Sorry about the leaf blower, guys. It's just how it goes when you're making videos sometimes. Following this green wire, that's the factory routing. All right, let me get that all straightened up underneath. So that's bolted up to the starter down there. I just put that wire loom uh, back on and just kind of have things back into their, their factory configuration. The leaf blower duo across the street has ceased, so I'm able to continue filming. At this point, we're ready to put the battery back in. Oh yeah, a lot of clearance on that fuse block. Battery is in and bolted down. Now we get to check out these sweet terminals. And they are uh, labeled negative and positive. Most battery posts are different sizes. And these are specifically fitted uh, to either. It's negative, positive, drops right on. Now something I really like about these 
is that the, the clamp bolt is separate from an accessory bolt. And so that's going to allow us to attach all kinds of stuff on here. But if we just need to pull this off real quick, simply undo that and it comes right off. That's pretty rad. Voila. So I just snaked everything around and hooked up uh, once it all kind of laid in there to, to my liking. And for no particular reason, the way I set these up is I put the cables that are critical for the vehicle on the inside of the bolt on each terminal. And then any of my accessory wires on the outside, which have the nut, so they're easily accessible or more quickly accessible than the, the vehicle uh, critical cables. I ended up putting the positive power for my Rough Country light controller box to one of the, the terminals there on the ANL fuse, uh, just because it didn't fit over the new 3 8 bolt. And I could have drilled it out, but um, that was simple and easy. All right, well now the part you guys have all been waiting for. All right, no kidding at all, my Jeep never starts that quickly cold. This Jeep hasn't started in 24 hours, it's 40 degrees outside. It never cranks that quickly and fires that fast. I wasn't, I wasn't expecting any difference really um, after doing this, but uh, I immediately noticed as soon as I fired up, it, it was just awesome, real fast. So that's pretty cool. All right guys, that's it for today's video. Jeepcables.com is a small veteran owned operation if you like American-made products, high-quality things, and want some more electricity flowing through your Jeep, JeepCables.com is the place for you. If you're interested in supporting Bleepin' Jeep further, please check the description below for all the links you could ever need. Alright guys, see you in the next video. Thank you.